Okay, so g'day and welcome back to seeing these coins and banknotes. And today we have lots of money. Yeah. So uh in today's video, we're gonna be talking about reasons why you shouldn't actually keep hash. So there is actually a big thing going around about hash is king and how <clears throat> people are talking about using cash more and i have no problem with this uh well it's part of my hobby that i like so we to keep this hobby alive which i think is not going to die if we don't use cash especially for older coins we're still going to have some collector's values like this korean uh 101 which i'll feature in another video so i'm going to actually make a video on these these will probably always be collector's items, just like antiques. Antiques are still collectors. Uh, like, you know, a few hundred years from now, this this uh, sticky tape uh, roll holder is probably going to be worth something to someone. As well as this case, this had tea in it. It's actually quite nice. But in a few hundred years, this will probably be in a museum. Uh, archaeologists like to find other people's junk or rubbish that's basically what archaeology is uh looking up getting uh you know getting material that humans have used in the past and at one point in time they decided to discard it mostly okay so now i'm talking about not keeping cash i'm not talking about not using cash we should always use cash but if you're going to keep cash in the long term you should probably keep enough for whatever you need to use it for so if you go to shops and buy groceries yeah you should have enough to actually uh for groceries uh but if you're gonna hoard this for like 30 to 40 years you are probably going to use lose all of your wealth in it so um i would only collect and keep current currency if it's uncirculated so like for the most part uncirculated for most years so like this five dollars pretty it's uncirculated i got these in 2016 so that's probably a bad thing uh should have got rid of them by now i did spend quite a lot of them that was scratched but then you got um, 2019 2021 so i just kept these as space fillers the 2019 is a pretty low print run so i'll probably keep those ones because they're a bit hard to get 2021 it's also a low print run but what i haven't seen is the 20 2018 haven't seen any of those we're in the 2020 so i'm not too sure if the when they're going to be issued they're more than likely will be right now one thing that was never issued was the 2014 five dollars which is the different series than this these older ones so most of those probably be, i would say most of those would be destroyed and uh they probably just got samples that they've kept so basically you need to be aware if you're going to collect twenty dollars well if you're going to collect any type of currency around the world and you want to keep it for your collection try and get one it's either uncirculated or has special serial numbers now i'm not talking about errors errors are, are a different ball game uh, we're just talking about standard currency it has no errors and we're just looking for special serial numbers for uncirculated now just because something's uncirculated doesn't mean it's gonna go up in value in the future generally in australia with paper notes and polymer notes you need to at least 20 years for uh, most of the grades to start lifting in value now i'm talking about 
probably extremely fly or less. So those banknotes tend to be worth face value uh, for 20 years. And then they slowly start to creep up as in uh, that's probably just inflation value that's actually doing that. And basically you still lost a lot of money because every year you have inflation. So if we go to the inflation calculator, so what I've put in is 2016 to 2023. And as you can see, we have five dollars in 2016 is equivalent to six dollars 16 now. And if we reverse that, we have five dollars now. It's equivalent to four dollars in 2016. So pretty much what you have done is you have lost money with your five dollar banknote in the last that's uh seven years so this is a good reason why you don't keep these banknotes and if we put i'll put 1966 sorry wrong screen okay 1966 so a five dollar actually they were only five dollars were only issued 1967 so a five dollar from 1967 is equivalent to 75 dollars now so basically if i use that calculator again okay so now we need to put okay so yeah, oh. okay there you go so five dollars divided by 75 so pretty much $5 now is equivalent to five, six cents back in 1966. Wow, I wonder if that is actually true. Uh, so that's a pretty high inflation rate. Let's put $1. Let's see what happens then. Okay, one dollar is equivalent to fifteen dollars. So, okay, if we reverse that, is we got one dollar divided by fifteen. Yeah, so the same. So one dollar back in nineteen. Uh, one dollar now is equivalent to five cents back in nineteen sixty-six. And as you can see, we have smaller denominations. So pretty much five cents. Okay, 0.05. It's worth 75 cents in today's money. So really, uh, really we should actually get rid of the 5, 10 and 20 cent coin. Actually, no. We should get rid of the 5 cent coin at least. Probably keep the 10, 20, make it and 50 and reduce it in size. So... That is my argument for why you should not keep most currency. Uh, because in the long term, you're going to lose value. And these ones in circulated condition, these are all, always probably going to be worth the actual face value. So $10. So in 100 years time, these ones probably worth, I don't know, equivalent to 10 cents we can buy now because this is the weight of fiat money so i'm not i don't have any silver coins on the table so silver and gold those type of coins they're different so just talk about paper money you know also the earlier paper money of all different regions uh they generally worth a lot more but you have to remember is that those didn't really have a collector's oh, for the main, main. Oh, okay. So they didn't have a wide market or collection until like 50 years afterwards. So if we're talking about the Australian first banknotes issued in 1913, probably wasn't until the 40s or 50s 
we're even the sixties that uh, a lot of people actually come to know because, well, before those time period, uh, Australia is actually majority of people lived in poverty. And it's only after the Second World War that we start to lift our game and to make it the population more egalitarian because that actually caused a lot of problems with um, uh, um, uh, people just trying to cause a revolt. So anyway, that is all I've got to say. Basically, collect banknote if it's uncirculated. But then again, considering the currency, most uncirculated banknotes are not worth much uh, because you need to wait at least 20 years for it to start going up. Uh, if it's in circulated condition like this one, as you can see, the window here is actually gone. So that's not an error. Don't be fooled by people from the fake. Uh, oh, this is an error unknown. Uh, so this one is only going to be worth $20 pretty much forever. And in 40 years' time, it's still going to be worth $20 because it's just so much damage anyway. So basically, you're also going to lose money with inflation. Anyway, thank you very much. I hope this helps you for coin and banknote collecting. If you have any comments, please leave it down below. If not, then, uh, I've got nothing else to say. Oh, here's the actual calculator. So I well, put on the other screen before. So you've got $1.1966 divided by $15. So $1 now is equivalent to $0.06 cents in 1966. So basically, our dollar's pretty much worthless these days. Anyway, thank you and... Hoo -hoo.